Good afternoon. And assalamu alaikum, as they will say in the Muslim countries, and Galabon accent, as they would do in Somalia. Uh, I'm so honored and humbled and pleased to be here with you in Oxford University. Uh, the title of our meeting today is called Conversation to Masdawad. So I intend to make this therefore a conversation and not to, uh, to make it a lecture or one way uh, uh, presentation. So I will only make uh, introductory remarks and then I will uh, I will let the uh, the conversation follow, and that uh, people may have uh, uh, questions to ask and comments to make. Uh, but before I do that, first of all, I'm I'm so happy that there are more, at least from the look of it, non Somalis, non Somali Minnesotans. Uh, because I was struggling with a dilemma whether if the majority of the people in the room were, were happened to be Somalis, would I then be obligated to speak in, in English? So you made my choice easy, so I'll make my presentations in, or my remarks in English. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, before I, I make my introductory remarks though, I have to thank few people that are not only uh, uh, instrumental in our meeting here today, but also to thank them in the role they play in the community and the services they have rendered to the uh, Somali uh, Minnesotans and, and Somalis beyond. Uh, I have in mind people like uh, the president of Oxpo. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the name of the school right. Uh, Mr. Paul. His last name is too too long for me, so I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll I'll live with Paul. I hope you you don't you don't mind. Uh, Mark told me, and I will thank Mark in a minute, but Mark told me, uh, gave me the insight that uh, Paul has been creating a space for Somali Minnesotans in Oxford for 13 years. So Paul, we thank you on behalf of the Somalis who came this, this uh, doors and, and uh, on their behalf, we are grateful to you, and please continue welcoming them. I hope they uh, will not uh, uh, disappoint you, and they will have uh, important contribution to make to their uh, uh, found chosen home, as uh, Chantal Mouffe would have it. Chantal Move is, a, is an, for those of you who are not familiar, is a political American political uh, uh, theorist, political science theorist, and she has a, a famous expression that appeals to me. She says, when she's discussing uh, communitarianism versus individualism, she made the insightful comment that. Uh, uh, she was in, in defense of uh, individualism and, and urban uh, life. She said, uh, uh, people can create their own society. She coined the expression is uh, discovered communities and chosen communities. She said you could, you could have, uh, you could find yourself uh, 
without your own choice to a community. You could be black, you could be Somali, a Muslim, an African. That's your discovered uh, community. But then you could also choose your own community. So you become Minnesotan. I don't think you can easily change your complexion, but you could choose to live in Minnesota and be a Minnesotan. And uh, uh, anything else you want to, to be. And I think it was a very perceptive. And so Somalis have chosen to be in Minnesota, many of them. And I hope they contribute to the uh, society here. And, and thanks for those of you who, who are supporting that process of their uh, integration, like uh, Oxford University. I also want to thank uh, Mark Ulrich, who, who has uh, adapted Somalia. I haven't seen a more uh, uh, an, an avid advocate for the Somali people here in Minnesota and uh, where I come from back in Somalia than Mark. Uh, Mark's contribution have already been shared with me by a friend of mine who, who is also a, a leader in our community here. But I was very happy when I met him that he, he does more than what I was told he was doing by Khadija to the Somali community. So Mark, thank you very much. Uh, and also the Minnesota, uh, uh, the, the glo global uh, Minnesota. Uh, who, who co, co, uh, hosted this uh, event today. Uh, I think all my time will be spent on thanking because I have many people to thank. So I'll be brief in my introduction. I also wish to thank uh, Hubert Humphrey uh, and the University of Minnesota uh, for co-hosting it, this event. Uh, back to my uh, introduction, and, and of course, um, I want to, uh, Khadija doesn't need me to thank her, uh, because we take her for granted. She is a, a Somali leader, she is a, a, a leader in the Minnesota community, and she, she nurtured us, and we could not have done, I could not have done what I have been doing, both in Somalia and as soon as I came here, if it was not her uh, generosity, hospitality, and, and support. So please thank uh, Khadija, uh, Paul, Mark, uh, Global Minnesota, and Hubert Humphrey, and Oxford University for me. Thank you. Khadija, am I forgetting? Did I forget anyone? Uh, you'll tell me later. Um, back to my remarks. Uh, I'm always asked the two questions that always come to me when I meet uh, non-Somalis, I'm asking, why did Somali people, in their craziness, why did they choose Minnesota? They come from uh, uh, a hot climate, a desert area, they didn't speak English. Why of all places Minnesota? And I am asked always uh, with a little bit of, uh, I guess, sympathy, sometimes a little bit of condescension. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. How Somalia, I mean, how are you doing? Are you, uh, I mean, terrorism, uh, piracy, starvation, poverty, 
collapse of state. How are you guys doing? So in my brief introductory, I will, uh, I will try to answer these two questions. So why Somalis to Minnesota? And by the way, I consider myself a Minnesotan. I have two children who are Minnesotans. My, my two kids are both born here in Minnesota. I initially came here. This was the work of Khadija, why I had to meet you today. But I came here to join the graduation of my son from Maramirai High School the day before yesterday. That is why I came here. So I'm, I'm therefore, at least you can say, half Minnesotan. So, uh, but at least in my case, I've already known uh, cold weather and, and snow when I came here. I, I lived many years in Montreal. I'm also a Canadian. I put on a number of hats. And I love Canada. So why Somalis to Minnesota? There are many, uh, ans uh, many sides to the answer. But one that appeals to me is that uh, a, a kind of a, a good omen by a, a famous Minnesotan, famous American, in the name of Hubert Humphrey. Hubert Humphrey, the late Hubert Humphrey, when he was a vice president of the United States, he was and remains till now the highest American official incumbent who visited Somalia. Precisely on January 7, 1968, on a tour to nine countries in Africa, Hubert Humphrey went to Somalia. So I guess we, are, we were returning the favor. That's why we came here. We remember, we followed the footprints uh, of Hubert Humphrey. We said, where did Hubert Humphrey came from? And where did he go back to? So we were told Minnesota, so we came here to, to, to thank him. He had a lot of good things to say about Somalia. Uh, he called Somalia the most democratic country in Africa. When he was reporting to uh, President Lyndon Johnson, that's what he said. And he invited three leaders from the countries. He visited nine countries in Africa. The United States was developing a new policy towards Africa. And uh, one of those uh, leaders was the Somali prime minister at the time, late Mohammed Ibrahim Legal, who came uh, upon his invitation to the United States, to the White House, in March 1968. So we have uh, a relationship before the first Somali ever appeared on the shores of Minnesota. And uh, when I shared this story, one day when I was an ambassador to Washington, D.C., and I came to Minnesota uh, in the company of the, uh, my best friend at the time, uh, the ambassador of Norway, the United States, uh, Carl Oss, and we were uh, making presentation uh, at the Humphrey Institute. I shared this information in that place, and I think the, the Institute, Humphrey, Hubert Humphrey Institute, went back to their books, and they found out, they, they recovered uh, the, the gift that was given to Humphrey uh, in, this, in Somalia, in Mogadishu at that time. Uh, I will, to the end of my remarks, I will uh, share with you some of the insights that Hubert Humphrey, uh, some of the recommendations that he made to President Lyndon Johnson, which are still valid today, and which may become your, some of the tasks that we want to, to give to you. 
the so that is why Somalis came to to uh, to at least from my uh, postulation, uh, you could have other other reasons. I'm sure Khadija and others will 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 add to the list. The other question was, I said, how is Somalia? So I have good news to report without exaggeration. Somalia is not ridden or is not consumed by uh, starvation, by droughts, by terrorism, insecurity, and piracy. And, and, and collapse of state. This uh, characterization of Somalia have been true at one point, but they are not true anymore. But the narrative remains, the narrative continues to hold. So some of you may have read that Somalia is this terrible place that, you know, that has all these uh, problems. I'm here to report to the Foreign Minister of Somalia that we have made a lot of progress on these fronts. And I'm sharing this with you, the good news, uh, and I'm very optimistic about the future of Somalia because uh, you have welcomed uh, many of us and you are concerned with our uh, well-being. And because we also want you to look at Somalia with a different, uh, prism, different perspective, so that at least we can develop a much uh, deeper engagement and, and cooperation between Somalia and Minnesota. So, Somalia has, is transforming, is defeating terrorism, and becoming more and more uh, peaceful. Politically, we are becoming uh, as, uh, by the way, when Hubert Humphrey called Somalia the most democratic country in Africa, one year after that, the democratic government was overthrown by a military dictatorship. And since then, we were going down the hill. Now Somalia is back. We are standing on our feet again, and we are reconstituting our state on a more organic way. We are building state institutions that are responsive, that are effective, that are transparent, that are accountable to the people. And the whole world is acknowledging it. And since 2004, or 2000, yeah, 2004, five presidents have changed uh, by elections. So there are still challenges. The state institutions are still weak. They still need uh, support. But uh, uh, considering the country was without effective uh, state for 40 years, Somalia is back. And this is being acknowledged by the World Bank, IMF, the European Union, and everybody else who is, uh, and the uh, American administration, successful American administration. In fact, the current ambassador to Somalia, uh, Yamamoto, when he was acting as his secretary for, for Africa, he said, if 1% of what the international community spent in, in Afghanistan was spent in Somalia, Somalia would have been a model of success. And he said it may still be. He ended up being an ambassador to Somalia, and he's now sitting in Mogadishu and, and, and supporting the, the, the rebirth of the Somali state. On the economic side, Somalia is growing a big. Somalis were already uh, known for their entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. Somali economic Somali business people are dominating economics in the region, in Kenya, in Djibouti, in Tanzania, in, U in Uganda, 
in South Sudan, in Zambia, as far as South Africa. I was sharing a comment that I heard from the, uh, the president of South Africa who said, how do we clone the Somalis so that we become business, su uh, successful business-wise like the Somalis? The highest building in Nairobi is being built by a Somali company. The highest building in Djibouti is built by a Somali company. The uh, fuel that gets to Zambia and Tanzania and Kenya is provided by Somali companies. Somalis are genius in, in their, <laughs> in their uh, entrepreneurship and creativity. Even in Somalia, when the state col collapsed, the cheapest telecommunication is in Somalia, internet and telephones. The, access, the internet access in Somalia is 80%. In, in Ethiopia, it's 15%. Somalia is number three in telebanking. I, I be working in the UN, I lived in Canada, but I look dinosaur when I go to Somalia. Young people send money through the telephone. I still use uh, dollars. So economic-wise, uh, the country is, is improving. And, and we are working very good with the international financial institutions. And we are uh, praised for uh, public health, uh, financial management. Uh, so I told you politically we are recovering. The challenge remains, security, same thing, and the economic thing. We are opening, and then, and this is the last point I will make, the region, Africa, and the region of the Horn of Africa is also uh, contributing to this uh, optimism of mine. The, when the region, when Somalia and Kenya and Ethiopia was always at loggerhead and in conflict, today they are cooperating and the two countries are coming together. And you can go today to Ethiopia uh, without, as a, if you are a Somali without a visa. The Ethiopian Airways that's going to Mogadishu, the Turkish Airways that are going to Mogadishu, there are Kenyan Airways that are going to Mogadishu, and there are Djibouti Airways that are going to Mogadishu. The Mogadishu Airport, the city that people may remind you is not secure, is the third busiest airport in the, in the, in the East Africa, after Ethiopia and, and Kenya. So Mogadishu Airport is busier than the airport of Entebbe, Uganda, Tanzania, I mean Dar es Salaam, uh, Kigali of, 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 of uh, of, uh, what do you call it, uh, Rwanda, Djibouti, uh, not to mention South Sudan, and even Sudan. So the economic activity is, is picking up. Much of that is due to the, uh, the, the support of the Somalis in the diaspora, led by the Somalis in Minnesota. The money sent back to Somalia by the Somali diaspora is $1.4 billion. That's more than, according to the World Bank and UNDB, is more than uh, humanitarian and development aid combined. So to conclude, to sustain that progress, or the, uh, the, those uh, uh, hopeful signs of the Somali rebirth. We need uh, the Somali diaspora to engage more in Somalia, to continue contributing, and to getting support uh, from the institutions in the societies they live or they reside in. That is from Minnesota, from the United States. We need to see more Somalis, and non Somalis come and invest in Somalia. We need to develop uh, linkages. Uh, we need to make uh, Minnesota uh, as an example. Today I met the, the governor, I visited the governor, and I made the same appeal to him. 70% of the Somali uh, people are youth under 
the age of 24. And uh, they lack opportunities, edu uh, quality education, employment. And, and the country, my country is rich. We have the longest continental coastal line in Africa. We are a gateway to the, to the Horn of Africa, a population that is half of the population of the United States. Uh, there's no reason why we don't have, as the, to quote the, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, there's no reason why we don't have half of the economy of the United States. Uh, so Somalia is open for business, and we attract, we, we invite uh, uh, Minnesota and companies to come to Somalia to invest, both for the sake of the Somali people, but also to, to improve their uh, business opportunities in Africa. And Hubert Humphrey, in his recommendation is, he said, Somalia needs strong state institutions, and he, he was advising the, the, his administration or the American president at the time, Lyndon Johnson, to help uh, Somali, state, Somali inst uh, state institutions to be uh, supported. The first water system project in Mogadishu was built by the Americans. Uh, he, Hubert Humphrey, signed that agreement. And he also advised it at the time, at that time, he said 40% of the Somali people are youth under the age of 30, and they need opportunity, quality education. He advised it at that time for college, uh, 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 college level schools, I mean, in, in Somalia. Uh, today, uh, that those uh, those uh, needs are still there, and we may I may put to you the same recommendation that uh, Hubert Humphrey have uh, submitted to to President Lyndon Johnson. I put that uh, uh, recommendation to to all of you, but particularly to present the President of Export. Hubert Humphrey University, I mean, uh, Minnesota of Minnesota, University of Minnesota, Hubert Humphrey uh, Institute, and Mark Rich. Thank you very much. Everybody. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, let's give you another round of applause. Uh, and I'll kick us off with just a couple of questions, and then um, folks from Global Minnesota will be coming around with microphones. So if you have a question for the minister, then please raise your hand, and then Global Minnesota will, will get to you. But uh, just ask that you wait for the microphone so that everybody can hear your question. Um, as Mark mentioned, I'm new to the Humphrey School of Public Affairs, but also not really, because I graduated from the Humphrey School. Uh, and prior to that, I worked for the State Department, where I worked in the Africa Bureau with Ambassador Don Yamamoto, um, and I got to work very closely with a lot of colleagues who were very engaged with Somalia and rooting for Somalia's success and pushing for those linkages that you mentioned. Um, one, one more thing I'll, I'll just note is that uh, the minister's son is going to the University of Minnesota starting this fall, so that's pretty great. Uh, and my first question uh, is, you, you've, you've mentioned the, this disconnect between the narrative that people hear about related to Somalia, that, you know, that it's a dangerous place, that things aren't going well, uh, and that it's a holdover from an earlier time. Could you talk a bit more about the conditions and the things that, that caused this transformation uh, that got Somalia onto steadier footing? And after that, could you talk a bit about where Somalia goes from here in terms of building stability, security, edu better education? Thank you very much, Maui. Uh, it's good to... Somalia is a small country, 
population is about 15 million. Uh, but then wherever I go, I find someone who is familiar with Somalia. <laughs> I'm glad you are one of them, you know, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, we, we outperform uh, our number, even though we have this narrative that uh, refuses to, to leave us, this negative uh, narrative. So the reason uh, that we are, we are achieving the successes is, uh, well, due to the international community. We should acknowledge that uh, Somalia has been helped by the international community. Uh, the UN, at one point, I remember when I first visited Somalia, everything was done uh, for Somalia by the UN. The state has collapsed, people went into civil war, and so people went crazy. And the UN was the only uh, actor in the country supporting. And I'm not saying this because I, I worked for the UN for 10 years, I subscribed to the noble goals of the UN. Uh, but, uh, but I have seen what the UN was doing so much. Then, of course, the, the American uh, people, the European people, and other Africans, Muslim countries, Arabs, they were all supporting Somali, multilaterally and sometimes directly. But it was basically the will of the Somali people. Yeah. I, was, I participated in the first uh, reconciliation conference in Djibouti in 2000 mm. as a student fresh from university as one of Sigisti Somali intellectuals who work at the grounds for the rebirth of the Somali uh, state. Since then, we have been uh, limping to the, to, the, uh, to the finish line. We are not, we are not that yet, uh, there yet, but we have, we have made a progress. All of that happened, as I said, with the support of the Somalis in the diaspora. So the, uh, there's an, by the way, Mo, Mo speaks Arabic. So in, there's an Arabic saying that says, Masaibu qawmi in the qawmi fawaid. Or what's, what's, uh, what's bad for one is good for, for another. So the collapse of the Somali state has created the influx of Somalis to, uh, to the outside. <laughs> created a pool of Somali uh, uh, diaspora. When I visit countries, Europe, Africa, or countries, as a Minister of Foreign Affairs, everywhere I meet successful Somalis, business people, medical doctors, engineers, political scientists, and even those who are playing a role in their country. The Minister of Immigration and Citizenship of Canada is a Somali, is a friend. The, uh, he visited the Humphrey School, actually, just a few months ago. There, there you go. I will not tell you how many Somalis are involved in the public life of Minnesota and the United States. You, you figure that out. Then, uh, and other states of the United States. Uh, I go to Sweden and I find this young girl who is a member of the parliament. I, I will go to the African uh, uh, meetings, head of states, and I find a Somali who is a minister in, from Gabon. Somali is a minister from Tanzania. This is true, it happened. So Somali people who went to the diaspora have contributed a lot to this progress that uh, you're making. So, so largely it's the Somali people, but the international community has, has supported. And where to from here, where we can only go uh, up. We are, uh, we are more, more and more Somalis in the diaspora, people educated at Hubert Humphrey uh, School and University of Minnesota and Oxford and other universities are coming back to the country and taking part in, in developing the institutions. And, uh, and we want more of those because uh, we, we have uh, we have a shortage of uh, uh, qualified people and human resources in Somalia. But with the infusion of many 
uh, educated people, business people from the diaspora, uh, and also uh, the people in Somalia who are very resilient, who have learned from their past mistakes, where the, the, the future is, is, is very promising. We, for the first time, we are uh, building our state institutions uh, uh, organically. In other words, we now are working solutions to that. Our self-governance, which, which is where we have failed, is now uh, improving. The, the state, the modern state, came to us alien. Uh, we, we inherited from the colonial and we acted as colonialists to our people. Now we understand that the raison d'etre of state is to serve your people and, uh, and we understand that we're doing that and that will strengthen the, the legitimacy of the state and the trust the people uh, both in the state institutions and in each other. And therefore, we are very hopeful. Uh, but we need uh, the support. Not uh, handouts, like we have been uh, a hand up. Uh, uh, given, but, but uh, hand up, uh, support. And this audience and the institutions of Minnesota and other states uh, like Minnesota and the American uh, are, are needed to, to stand by, to continue standing by us. Thank you. Uh, could you uh, share a little bit about the security challenges that Somalia has weathered and how in that specific area of security and countering al-Shabaab, how, how that has been changing and, uh, and where you see that going from here as well? Yeah, so the security was the biggest challenge to us. We brought it to ourselves. Uh, we, we uh, I guess largely due to bad governance, the Somali state has failed. People lost uh, trust in the state and therefore they, they got rid of it. We became the, the, the ideal place for libertarians. We, we said we don't want any uh, government authority. People were doing their things. But then came these crazy people. Uh, I guess it was fashionable at the time, you know, to have Al-Qaeda, ISIS, ISIL, and Somalia was no, no different. It was a, a, a space waiting to be filled by, in the absence of, of, of a state, it was a, a space that was uh, uh, ready to be filled by, by, by crazies. So we had uh, Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab is the Somali name for the Al-Qaeda uh, branch of the terrorists in Somalia. And at one point, they controlled the whole country. And, and that's what gave us this bad image. Uh, that's why, I guess, till now, the current administration has put a ban on, on us. But uh, we have overcome Al-Shabaab. Somali people, with the help of the American uh, government, different successive administrations, and the generosity of the American people, and the European people, and the AU, we have a force called AMISOM, made up of uh, neighboring countries, Ethiopia, Kenya, Djibouti, uh, as well Uganda, as well as Burundi, have supported us uh, in defeating Al-Shabaab with the help of the Somali force. The Somali uh, National Security Forces are not yet uh, ready to fill the gap, so that's why we needed the support of others. But a lot of improvement has happened. Shabaab are on their way to complete uh, final defeat, but they still are able to create uh, spectacular uh, Bombings, they, you know, by planting a bomb here and there, and by committing uh, suicide attacks, which is still give us the the image that uh, of insecurity. 
but uh, the dar is becoming far and less in between, and, and therefore uh, we are uh, challenges remain, but we are we are making a progress on that front as well. Security front. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Minister. Uh, I have one more question before we open this up to everybody. Uh, this could be sensitive, but you are a diplomat, so you know how to respond to any question. Uh, how are things going with the Trump administration in terms of the ban, in terms of how you and the, the, uh, the foreign ministry and the mission based in Washington, D.C. Are, are treated? We love American administration, any administration. <laughs> 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 well... Uh, frankly speaking, the uh, the support to the to the Ameri by the American administration to Somalia has not slowed down, even under Trump. Uh, it continued. Uh, in fact, it was increased. Trump, you know, loves military. He loves military in general, so he gave. Uh, uh, the responsibility of fighting Shabab in Somalia to the military. And the military of the US military is doing a good job at that. And he availed more resources to them. So on that front, uh, we're doing fine. The administration could do, could help us even more had the president did not engage in, in you know, uh, mischaracterization of the Somali people as, you know, a uh, bunch of idiots and terrorists. And, um, these are not his words, but uh, that's how it came out to the Somali people. So, and, and do, putting ban on Somalia because we needed to uh, engage with the. It's a time when Somalia was turning the corner and, and, and becoming a, a healthy uh, uh, body politic and was ready to engage the international communities when this uh, ban on Somali people came, where the Somali uh, students cannot come to study universities like this one, where we cannot attract uh, due to this bank's uh, investment, where Somali remittances that made it possible for $1.4 billion to go back to Somalia now cannot engage in the banking system of the, of the United States. That is still a problem for us, and that, that is uh, 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 something that we... we the administration could have uh, for help us with. So, no complaints. We hope that uh, uh, the administration will see to it that, uh, uh, you know, we are, we are just like any other uh, uh, society. You know, we have our own uh, weaknesses and shortcomings, but if uh, given an opportunity, Somali people are, are very uh, entrepreneurial and very grateful and very creative. And we could play a, a positive role in, in the international uh, arena. Thank you, Mr. Minister. And thank you for... I was not too, too, too diplomatic. No, that was, too no that, was a very, that was a very gracious response. Uh, and we're so thankful that you're here. And we're so yeah. thankful that this all came together. And I'm going to thank Khadija again. <laughs> Uh, so, folks will be coming around with microphones if anybody has any questions. Mr. Ambassador, how are things different for Somalia since uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed came into power in, in Ethiopia? I love these kinds of questions <laughs> <laughs> because I love uh, Abiy Ahmed. And, uh, and don't tell the, the Somalis who are still uh, in the mindset of the days that we, Ethiopia and us, were, were fighting at, uh, in conflict. Uh, Abiy Ahmed and my president, and to be uh, frank, 
the presidents of the region of the Horn of Africa are all, uh, you can say, a new generation, with the exception of one or two. And they're all uh, people with, uh, with positive uh, attitude towards uh, you know, relationships uh, with each other. So Abi is, uh, you can say, uh, a catalyst for a positive change that's happening, not only in his country, but also in the region. Somalia uh, and Ethiopia and Eritrea and Djibouti and Sudan, Kenya, all of us are coming together. I mentioned it, uh, uh, and opening new opportunities for our people and leaving uh, uh, old uh, uh, narratives of conflict and, and mistrust and suspicion behind. Uh, Abi is, is, a, is, a, is a key player in that. Uh, my president and prime minister are actually, without exaggeration, are also uh, joining hands with him and, and asking other regional uh, leaders to do the same. As I told you, Ethiopia, uh, Somali today can go to Addis without visa. That was not so one year ago when Abi was, uh, came on the scene. Uh, Ethiopian Airways is going to Mauritius today, the busiest of the, of the, of the, of the, of the uh, flights. Flight route is now to, I came actually to, to Chicago via Addis Ababa and to here. So Abi is a dynamic leader, uh, very ambitious, not only uh, and hopeful, and not only for the region, but for, for his own country. He opened it up. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mark and I were, were discussing a few minutes ago. He, he opened up the gates of uh, prisons. There's not a single uh, political prisoner in the, In fact, he was questioned at the parliament of Ethiopia, they told him, you're releasing terrorists, that means Somalis, and, and, and you're doing this and this and you're not consulting, and, and, and his answer was, you know, in our case, the state was, and he's the president of the, prime minister of this, he said, we were the terrorists. We were picking up people from their homes in the middle of na at night without uh, court uh, <laughs> police and he says there's our constitution he dared to say that people were saying this guy is crazy he's going too fast his changes are coming uh, fast some Somalis is still asking me is he for real I mean or he's trying just to uh, you know uh, put us to uh, to sleep so that he you know uh, so I can't stop talking. If you start me on, on Abi, I'll, I'll keep going, but uh, for, the, for the benefit of time, I'll tell you uh, in short that it has been very positive and we look forward to uh, his successes and success of Ethiopia, the success for the region. 100 million people, unlock it, they could make... Uh, and then, by the way, one third of the Ethiopian uh, landmass is populated by Somali people, the Somalis. Somali region, which was also seen, uh, 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 you know, openness and reconciliation. We had a, a opposition group, liberation uh, movements there called, who were fighting Ethiopia for 40 years, and now they are back. So, uh, so Abi, Abi has been uh, a positive to Africa and to our region. Thank you, Ambassador Asawad. I'm wondering, you talked about 70% of the young people of the population. Can you talk about the successes in rebuilding the educational system and what the future challenges are? It's a good question. Uh... The biggest challenge 
and the biggest opportunity for the future of Somalia is what we do with the, with the youth and the opportunities that are availed or provided to, to this large uh, number of youth in Somalia. Uh, as I said, there was a progress on all fronts, just like there was progress on the uh, on security and economic uh, performances and good governance on constitution, on reconciliation. There has been improvement on the education front as well. But uh, because of the uh, uh, limited uh, revenue in the country uh, and because of uh, still weak institutions, the quality of education is still uh, very low. The access to education, although every Somali child wants to go to school, but the, the, the opportunities, uh, the facilities are very, uh, very limited. There are still security challenges that do not give uh, people easy access to where the schools are. So there are serious challenges, but there is improvement. And this is where we need uh, the biggest support. And also when a student is finished uh, uh, school, either from high school, even from universities, they don't have, uh, since there was no quality education, their skills are not up to the, uh, up to the uh, requirement in the workforce, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the you know, employment uh, market. But also, uh, there's a limited investment, and that's why I was appealing to more investment in Somalia to create more opportunities for the youth. So uh, education is improving, and the government is keen on expanding it and making it uh, imp uh, also improving the quality, and also building uh, or availing uh, vocational uh, schools, you know, the, the, so that uh, people uh, they match the requirement of the. Uh, the market and the, and, the, and the availability of skills. That is still a, a challenge because you need, a, you need resources to do that. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Good afternoon. Thank you to Global Minnesota for this impactful event as well as Oxburg University for Global Education Experience and the Humphrey School of Public Affairs at the University of Minnesota. Welcome, Ambassador Awad. My name is Irvin K. Miller, and I am an independent candidate for the 2020 general election to represent Minnesota's fifth district. My question for you today is what can I do when elected to represent those in my district who identify as Somalian, seeking to make the United States their home, become integrated into the entire fabric of this nation. In addition, what can I do for those in my district who are seeking to return home to their land of Somalia? And finally, what can we the people do in this country to assist our global citizens in your country as well as the globe feel safe and secure in their homeland? Yeah. Um, could, you, could you repeat the specific question too? Yeah, thanks. So the first, <laughs> there's there's the so many things there. Yeah. What can I do? There are, I'm sorry, can you do my name? There are those who, are, who want to stay and make this country their home. Yet what I have discovered is that there is a sense of being isolated 
and there's a struggle between those who want to call the United States their home and those who are here for what reasons we know of, but want to return home and call Somalia home. And at the same time, my question to you is, what can we as this entire nation help your people feel safe and secure so that they do not feel the need to have to leave one's home? And I, I cannot clarify it any clearer than that. Uh, no, no, I, I, I didn't hear the, to no, begin with, but now, now, now I, can, I heard you. So uh, I'll leave the first part of the equation to, the, to those who are here. They know their uh, issues better than I am. Uh, people like Khadija and Ziad are here. My impression is that Somalis in Minnesota are doing just fine. Uh, like any other society, there may be those who need a little more help. But, uh, but from what I understand, they, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the situation of Somalis here, Somalis are, are everywhere in the, in the society, in the public life, the people who are being, like we are just told that there was a, a, a someone uh, who, who was, uh, you know, graduate from this school who is now a representative in the state uh, 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 legislature. And uh, yesterday I was told that we have more than 40 medical doctors, Somali Medical Doctor Association, Somali uh, uh, Bar Association. The number is, is becoming bigger. The many students at the universities, uh, Somali businesses are uh, everywhere. Somali people are thriving uh, here in, in, in Minnesota. Uh, if there are more opportunities provided, of course, for, for every society, we always seek to improve our situation. And I hope that more Somalis are given uh, an opportunity and that the gap is, uh, is uh, made smaller between those who have been already established and the new immigrants, not only for the Somalis, but for other immigrants. And I think that will happen uh, uh, as time uh, moves on. Now, I can confidently answer to the last two questions. The, those who want to go back, Somalia is ready for them. They will be very much welcome. Their uh, expertise, their, uh, the individualists are coming back with uh, you know, uh, skills. They need it very much in Somalia. They're coming back with resources, like they want to open uh, invest, uh, you know, business in Somalia, they're very welcome. By the way, as I said, it's the diaspora that sustained the Somali people by their remittances and also by their, uh, uh, by their skills. I, I don't need to tell you that uh, everybody who is now in the government or in the business in Somalia are mainly people who came back. I, I have been in Canada before I went back to Somalia. So I'm a Canadian. In the, in the Somali cabinet, the biggest number of uh, cabinet ministers from one country, from inside Somalia, and from us as well, are those who came from Canada. Eight of us are Canadian Somalis in the, in the cabinet. Our president is American. Mm -hmm. We lived in, in, in Buffalo many years. Our prime minister is Norwegian. <laughs> he speaks perfectly uh, Norwegian, by the way. And uh, I can continue. I mean, the, they're from Sweden, they're from Australia, the Somalis are everywhere. So, uh, so the country was already welcoming and receptive to the, the talents of the Somalis are coming back, and they're still welcome, and even now, the time is even uh, more uh, opportune for people to come back and contribute to Somalia. Whether they want to move uh, completely back home or whether they want to have 
one leg here, one leg. That's also a possibility. Uh, what can you or the international community do to help us even uh, do better? Uh, that's what I was uh, talking about earlier. Uh, we need more help in, uh, in uh, basically in improving, uh, in, 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 in maintaining the, the progress. Uh, we need more investment. We don't need a uh, handout. We, we have the support to uh, NGOs, humanitarian organizations, and to the UN uh, agencies fund some programs have been much help to us. They sustained us during our difficult times. But now it's about time that we, we, we do things for ourselves. Uh, and we are supported. Uh, that is investment, uh, infrastructure development, institutional uh, strengthening, so that uh, we, the Somali state, the, the relationship, the positive relationship between the Somali state and the society that have been severe, severed is now uh, uh, reinstated. So, so that's why we, we want more uh, Canadian, more uh, Minnesotans uh, visiting Somalia, uh, more Minnesotan companies coming back to Somalia, and, uh, and uh, North Somalis from Minnesota going back to Somalia. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, help me thank our two incredible speakers this afternoon, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Molly Hayes. We, we can continue this conversation.